that what was involved was the transfer of the whole of our democratic system to others. But do you think Canada is going to allow its laws to be written in America? The whole thing is an absurdity. <laughs> what part of God? Where did you get it from? In whose interest you exercise it? To whom you're accountable and how can we get rid of you? And if you can't get rid of the people who govern you, you don't live in a democratic system. Clever oh, thing, she just a bigoted woman. For a country of Britain's size, it's important we are players in the European Union. One of the great British achievements has been uh, an enlarged European Union, which has made a huge difference. If you're a Brexiter, I hope you won't vote for the Labour Party, because the Labour Party is moving increasingly against Brexit. Your entire strategy is basically to sabotage Brexit. That's it, isn't it? Uh, yes. You I'm say. saying what you want is Brexit delivered. You should vote for the party that's going to deliver Brexit. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. A huge, huge welcome here at the Sugar Hut. What a fantastic venue. And a massive thank you to Mickey Norcross. What a star. Thank you very much, Mickey, Yay. for having us, for hosting us. No better venue here in the Eastern region, in Brentwood. What an enormous leave vote we had, unbelievably, three years ago. We should not be here, ladies and gentlemen, but we are. So if we're going to do this, let's win it, and let's win it big. Yeah. And it's fantastic also to have the support of Derek. There you are. Wave your hand, Derek. Derek Chisora. Another fan, another supporter. We need more people to put their head above the parapet and to say that they believe in democracy. Now, we at the Brexit Party, it may feel as though we've been around for a long time, but the truth is, it's less than five weeks, ladies and gentlemen, less than five weeks since we launched. And let's just have a quick look. Hopefully we've got, uh, have we got the launch video team? Can't see it. Ignore the launch video. We'll carry on. We've got, we have, look, here we are. You want to see it again. It's so good. Did you pay for it? Not to worry, we can't hear it. But it's an indication. We've had rallies all over the country. We were last night, we were down in the valleys in Wales. Unbelievably, the people who don't support democracy, they wouldn't, they actually lay on the road to prevent us going into the venue. That's how frightened they are about, you know, what we are achieving. The establishment is terrified because they know that we are on the right of democracy. Yeah. And here in the Eastern region, I'm incredibly proud to be a candidate with some other great candidates. We'll hear in a second from a couple of them. But, you know, we need to make sure we win. We send a very big, clear message back to Westminster. We meant it the first time. Leave does mean leave. Yeah. And so the challenge for all of us in the last seven days, we've got to get the vote out. We've got to give people trust back in democracy. And it is tragic when we hear people say they will never vote again. We have to give that confidence back into democracy in this country, the mother of all democracies. And our first candidate is a real star. She knows more about fishing than almost anybody else in the Eastern region. She is the director of the Lowestoft Fish Market Auctions. She's passionate about what restoring the right to our fishing waters can achieve for coastal communities. You know, this is a massive opportunity. In the same way, the whole of Brexit is an opportunity. But fishing the coastal communities is something that is very dear to all of our hearts, but in particular to our next, our first candidate who's going to speak apart from me. Please give a massive welcome, June Mummery. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Brentwood. 
My name is June Mummery and I own the Fish Auctioneers in Lowestoft, Suffolk and represent the East Coast fishing industry. Thank you. I am delighted to be running as one of the Brexit Party candidates for the beautiful Eastern region. Brexit is a golden opportunity to take back full control of our waters and the fish within it. We have some of the richest fishing grounds in the world which we currently not reaping the benefits of. Full control of our precious ocean once again enables us to begin rejuvenating our suffering coastal communities. The fishing industry creates employment. For every one job at sea, eight more are created on land. In order to catch the fish, we will need to build ships once again. This involves draftsmen, draftswomen, shipwrights, engineers, welders, platers, electricians, just a list of few. We as a country have the ability, we possess the knowledge, we now need to grasp this lifeline we are being presented with and so desperately need in order to rebuild a historical industry that has been forgotten about by our governments past and present. In the interest of future food security, we can feed our nation, we can self-sustain. The UK fishing industry could be worth £6.4 billion to our economy and has the potential to be as profitable and sustainable as the likes of Iceland, Norway and Faroe. A staggering 80% of our fish is caught by the EU. What country would give away its ocean, whether it's aggregates, oil and gas, renewable energy or fishing? I am determined to bring home our fishing industry. Our seas belong to each and every one of us standing here today. It's our back garden and we want it back. Thank you. Thank you. Yesterday I was out campaigning in Lowestoft and Great Yarmouth with fellow Eastern Region Brexit candidates Paul Hearn and Edmund Fordham. It was an absolute pleasure to meet with real local people and listen to their points of the current state of not only, only the Eastern Region but the country as a whole. The biggest concern we heard endlessly throughout the day was just how let down the public feel how they feel betrayed, ignored and in all honesty treated with nothing but contempt. Both constituencies in the 2016 referendum voted to leave the European Union and their vote should not be ignored. Democracy is the very foundation of our country, something our ancestors before us fought so hard for. My theory is very simple. What most people want in life is to leave school, get a job, fall in love, and live happily ever after. Such a simple concept that the UK should be achieving. The nation has put their faith in our current Conservative government, trusting them to represent, take care of their country, and look after the people's interests. Our government has failed the people. Our country needs change, and the only political party to do that successfully is the Brexit Party. So please vote for the Brexit Party on May the 23rd. Together, let's change politics for good. Thank you. Isn't she great? We're so lucky to have June's passion, her experience and her wisdom in such an opportunity. There are so many areas of opportunity for Brexit. We need to just remind the whole country constantly, this is the biggest opportunity for reform this country has had in a couple of generations. And there is a huge appetite out there. People truly believe in what we stand for, which is let's change politics for good. The appetite for serious political reform so that people have trust in their leaders and their politicians has never been greater. The opportunity reform for reform has never been stronger. And that's why the establishment are so worried, because they know 
that actually the people want change. To, so to our next speaker for the Eastern region, another star, he studied actually international relations. So he knows a thing or two uh, about you know, what goes on um, in Brussels and it's wonderful to have him. He's been campaigning uh, for Brexit and the Eurosceptic cause for many, many years. Please give a huge welcome, Michael Heaver. Hello, Brentwood. How are we doing? Let's be having you. Right, uh, I'd just like to first of all say thank you very much to Mickey Norcross for the use of this fantastic facility. I'm a big fan of the Sugar Heart. It really is proper stuff and I thoroughly recommend it. And it's great to see so many of you here today. Seven days to go. That's all it is until we get our vote in the European elections. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what the Brexit party's been doing. We've never seen it in this country before and I want you to understand that you are part of what we are doing. I think it's over 100,000 registered supporters for this party now, a party that not that long ago didn't even exist. It is quite remarkable and it shows you that we will not be ignored by those in Westminster. We refuse to be ignored and when you look at the opposition, I mean really, I mean look at what they're doing, these, these pathetic Twitter attacks. Last night I believe in Wales they were trying to shut down a road. They will not silence us. You know, I was on Sunday Politics East and uh, the opposition, they had Change UK on there. Quite while they were on there, I have no idea. They seem to have the same policy as the Labour Party, which is a complete and utter stitch up. Because they want us to vote again. They want us to have a second referendum. And guess what? They don't even want an exit on WTO terms to be on the ballot paper. They want Remain or Remain. It's quite unbelievable. And when you look, Across Essex, if you look at Brentwood, 59% of people in 2016 voted to leave. A remarkable close to 80% turnout. Look at Castle Point in Essex as another example. A 73% vote to leave on a 75% turnout. And you look elsewhere in the east of England region, in Cambridgeshire, in places like Fenland, an over 70% vote. And in Norfolk, Great Yarmouth, over 70% vote for leave. Quite unbelievable that such huge turnouts and such huge backing to leave the European Union nearly three years later have been totally and utterly ignored and not delivered. But we're here to deliver a message of hope, of optimism, and we're saying to you, please don't give up. Please don't think your vote matters. Please don't think you're being ignored because we're not ignoring you. We're in the Brexit party. We are you. We are the people that campaigned for Brexit. We are the people that voted leave. We are the people that are now standing up for you. And that is why this European election is so hugely, hugely important. It is your chance to say that you will not be ignored. And you don't just believe in Brexit as much as you did in 2016. But you believe in it now more than ever. And let me tell you something. If we get that big delegation of Brexiteer MEPs the likes of Richard, the likes of June, backing up Nigel, and we take a significant role in the negotiations. People like Richard Tice, they're not going to get turned over by the, by the EU the way that our government have been. Absolutely no chance. The quality of the people we've got in the east of England and right across the country will stand up for the pro-leave majority. Yeah, yeah. And let me just tell you this as well. This doesn't begin and end next Thursday. Oh, no, no, no. The establishment might wish that, but if you look at some of the polling at the moment, level with the Conservatives in the general election, and even one poll that had the Brexit party ahead. And let me tell you something. If we can carry this on with the support of the people, we can, in Essex alone, I believe, take multiple parliamentary constituencies at the next Westminster election. This party is not going away. We're in it for the long haul. We're in it to stand up for democracy, to stand up for Brexiteers, to fight for what's right, and to show that we will not roll over and we will not be ignored by the establishment. It ain't gonna happen. So, let's be optimistic. Let's be passionate about the opportunities, the wonderful opportunities that Brexit can deliver for our country. And let's, next Thursday, stand up bold, proud, saying that we believe in Britain, we're voting for the Brexit party and we're fighting to win the European election. So thank you very much for your support, everyone. And we have...
just one more speaker now for you. You may have heard of him, Nigel. You know, he is truly, in my view, the godfather of the Leave movement. He is the governor of Brexit. Give him a huge welcome, please. It is Mr. Nigel Farage. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, Brentwood. I've been here before, not just to the Sugar Hut, but as a candidate in European elections. Can you believe this is the sixth time I've stood in European Parliament elections and I genuinely thought this wouldn't happen again and it shouldn't have happened again, should it? Because we voted in a referendum, we then supported political parties in a general election who told us they'd deliver Brexit, we then saw 500 MPs vote for Article 50, and it was there in law. We were leaving on March the 29th. There was no doubt about it. In fact, our brilliant Prime Minister... It's all right, she won't be there long. Our brilliant Prime Minister told us over a hundred times we were leaving on March the 29th. The Labour Party told us they would honour the result of the referendum. And what we have seen is the most extraordinary political stitch-up. It's the only way I can describe it. Our Parliament, our government are determined not to give us a clean break Brexit. Now, I spent 25 years campaigning for us to be free of European Union. I didn't want unelected bureaucrats in Brussels to have the say over how we should live our lives. And having seen the behaviour of Tusk and Barnier and Juncker in these negotiations, I think I was right for all that time. And frankly, given their arrogance and their bullying, the sooner we're free of this, the better, as far as I'm concerned. But we're here and we have an election to fight. And I made a decision towards the end of last year. I thought, I haven't spent 25 years fighting against the establishment, fighting for us to be a free independent country, to be rolled over by a group of dishonest career politicians. And that was where the inspiration came from. I said, right, I am going to found the Brexit party. And five weeks ago tomorrow, we launched. And within five weeks, We've managed to get over 100,000 people in this country to pay £25 to become registered supporters. It's not a bad effort. And I have to say, we have spoken at a variety of places. We did one meeting in an airport hangar. We've done others in theatres. Last night, we were in a car park in, in the valleys of Merthyr Tidville, and today we're in a nightclub. So you can't say we don't get around a bit, because we do. Um, and tonight we'll be speaking at a hall up in Wolverhampton. And what we found is tremendous energy and enthusiasm. People really want this. And what they want now is what I want. I got this wrong. I thought if we won the Brexit battle, our politicians would simply have to deliver it. I've now learnt that this battle is about far more than Brexit. This battle actually is about democracy. It's about whether we are a democratic nation. It's about whether we have a bond of trust between us and those that govern us. It's about how the rest of the world looks at us. You know, we used to be an admired country. This Prime Minister and our Parliament have turned us into a laughing stock. So what we need to do is not just next Thursday send a message back to Westminster telling them we still believe in Brexit, perhaps even more strongly than we ever did. What we have to do next Thursday is to begin a process whereby we break the existing two-party system. These two parties now serve nothing but themselves. They don't serve the national interest. Parliament does not reflect the will of the people of this country. And what we're doing is nothing less than we're launching a peaceful political revolution in British politics. Things have got to change fundamentally. We are utterly determined as a team to do that. I think we've got the most impressive 
and most diverse range of candidates that any party has ever put up for public office in this country. I'm proud to be leading the team, to be leading the charge. I want us to win next week, but not just to win, but to win big. I want it to give a seismic shock to Westminster and then to go on to Peterborough on the 6th of June and try and win our first seat in Westminster. And we will keep this campaign going until we get a parliament that actually keeps faith and keeps its promises with the British people. But we can't do it on our own. We need some support. We need some helpers. So let me ask you, the good people of Brentwood, are you with us? Yes. Will you go out there over the next week and tell everyone you know to go out next Thursday and vote for the Brexit party? Yes. And here in Essex, of all places, give them the message. The only way is Brexit! Thank you. Vote for the Brexit party on May the 23rd and let's change politics for good. ...going on from parts of the establishment who are looking for any excuse to stop this or to delay it. The instruction of the people wasn't leave subject to a deal, it was leave. Leave. It's not, it wasn't even Brexit, it's actually worse than remaining in the European Union. I want a clean, proper Brexit. All right, Let's be very clean... clear. What we need is leadership that is prepared to either negotiate a good deal or walk away. No deal, no problem, no money. We save this amount of billion, we spend it back in the UK. Garbage in equals garbage out with these economic models. There's a wonderful opportunity, as long as we leave the customs union, because that's crucial. We can then have a free port, yeah, yeah. Sorry, and sorry. free ports generate thousands and thousands of manufacturing jobs. If we have no deal, we're not going to pay 39 billion unless our negotiators are incredibly weak, and that actually really concentrates the minds of the European Union. Because if they haven't got 39 billion of our money, they are bust. Oh, come on. Let's be clear. We all know in business that no deal is better than a bad deal. Of course, it's true. Every business person knows that. And this is the worst deal ever in history to pay £39 billion for nothing guaranteed in return. Please welcome to the stage Richard Tice. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Here we are in sunny Wales. It's always sunny here, isn't it? Sunny in Merthyr Tydfil. Welcome, Brexiteers. Thank you very much. And some of you have had to work quite hard just to get in the car park. Unbelievable, isn't it? That some people would try and stop free speech, try and stop democracy. But we know that we've got right on our side. I'm Richard Tice. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, I've been involved in running small businesses, medium and large. I've been involved in building thousands of homes, creating tens of thousands of construction jobs. And I sort of had a vague interest in politics which grew. It's almost taken over the day job actually. Um, and I must confess, I was a member of the wrong political party. I know, I know. Uh, actually, you're much nicer. Some crowds give me a really hard time for that. <laughs> um, but I accepted the invitation uh, five weeks ago, when we launched, to be the chairman of the new Brexit party. And I think it's fair to say, we've been quite busy in the last five weeks. Uh, we really have uh, taken the political world by storm. Uh, you know, we've made huge progress in the polls. We've been holding rallies all over the country, whilst other people like Change UK, they've had a small sort of book club launch in a room. <coughs> um, so let's just see the, uh, the launch video of the Brexit party uh, just on the screen here, hopefully if the technology works. We have been betrayed. That is why I set up the Brexit party. It's why we're going to fight the European elections on May the 23rd. And that is just the beginning of what is needed in this country. Democracy is under threat. And when politicians fail to deliver, there must be consequences. I was too young to vote in 2016, but now I support the Brexit party because I believe in delivering on democracy. It's time to recognise that actually we are an incredible nation. This isn't about left or right. It's about standing up for our right to be heard. Successful, hardworking, so much to be confident, enthusiastic, 
and optimistic about. That's why I'm supporting the Brexit party. We are a single nation. We wish to remain a nation. They must adhere to the promises made to the people. Let's be optimistic. And for the benefit of our children and grandchildren, if you want a home and you're a Brexiteer, you join the Brexit party now. We can do so much better than currently we're getting from our members of parliament. We want to be an independent, self-governing nation, making its own laws, controlling its own borders and being proud of who we are as a people. Join us, help us, support us, do what you can for us. We need change in this country and we need it now. Britain needs the Brexit party and the Brexit party needs you. So I just want to make sure you haven't all gone to sleep. Uh, let's have your placards up. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. Excellent. You're all on side. Uh, better than our politicians, of course, who have just completely and utterly humiliated us. The scene of our Prime Minister writing not one, but two begging letters in the space of a fortnight to overseas leaders and bungling Brussels bureaucrats, begging letters asking how we can conduct ourselves and run our economy. It's an absolute outrage. Incompetent leadership, incapable negotiators, and MPs trying to do dirty, nasty, dodgy deals in back rooms against the democratic will of the people. It's an absolute disgrace. They, I don't know whether the Prime Minister's hard of hearing, but she's tried to get this horrendous worst deal in history through the House of Commons, not once, not twice, but three times. And now, we hear in the last 24 hours, she's going to try again. When's she going to get it? Did she not read the polls at the weekend? showing what's going to happen to the Conservative vote, hopefully, in next week's European elections. It's going to completely collapse. It's unbelievable. So these MPs, they're trying to sell our great nation down the river, tying it up into a straitjacket and giving the key to the padlock to these people in Brussels. The civil service have shown to be completely and utterly woeful. They've been involved in negotiating this, the worst deal in history. Why? because they don't believe in it. Who on earth would send into battle, into a negotiation, people who don't believe in what they're negotiating for? You wouldn't do it when you're going to go and buy a car or a house. Why on earth would you do it when you're trying to do a great deal for our country? Enough is enough, ladies and gentlemen. This country deserves so much better. It really does. And that's why we launched the Brexit Party, because we knew we knew, that enough is enough. We are a strong, proud, incredible nation. We always have been, and we are poised to go from strength to strength. But it requires competent, capable leadership. It requires politicians of experience, who've done something, achieved something, know how things work. And that's why we're so proud of the 70 candidates, MEP candidates, including those that you'll hear from for Wales shortly. The quality of them is truly outstanding. I believe that it's the highest quality group of candidates that have ever stood for public office in a generation. The vast majority of these people never thought that they would be tempted to run for public office. But they, like Nigel and I just said, We've got to do something. We cannot allow this to go on anymore. Enough is truly enough. I believe, we believe, that actually the great British people want strong leadership. They want politicians who know how to get things done to make things happen, who know how to spend our tax pa taxpayers' cash. It's not government money, it's our money, taxpayers' cash and we should be spending it wisely, properly, smartly, cutting out the waste, 
because that way we could have so much better public services and infrastructure. But to do that, you've got to have competent, capable people basically following common sense politics. And that is what we stand for. Our slogan is simple and it's clear. We're here to change politics for good. And the first thing we've got to do, all of us, we've got to make sure that not only we vote, but your family, your friends, your friends of friends, they've got to vote in this European election. It's never been more important. Never has the opportunity been greater for change. Never has the, never has the appetite been stronger for change. And now is the moment, ladies and gentlemen, when truly we have to send that clear message to Westminster. We told them once three years ago they didn't listen. They're still not listening. So let's make them listen next Thursday at the ballot box. <clears throat>
116 years later, there was a very important referendum, which I'm sure many of you can remember. In fact, it was the referendum to end all referendums. Now, yesterday I was looking through my notebook at some of the notes I'd been ma making throughout my political career, and I turned to the 2016 campaign during the referendum, and I had written in there a, a soundbite that I wanted to say on TV in a debate, and it was, you must vote in this referendum because it will be your last chance to have a say. Well, how wrong was I? Because they didn't listen, did they? They didn't take your, your vote for, for, for fact. They just decided that actually you got it wrong. You didn't know what you were voting for. And in the best tradition of the EU, do it again and again until you get it right. All four of the Labour MEP candidates think that you didn't know what you was voting for and all four of them want to have a second referendum here in Wales. It is, <laughs> it's unbelievable, isn't it, that these people can actually stand and say that they are Democrats, that they believe in democracy. How can the MP from Merthyr Tidville feel that they can walk down the high street of Merthyr when 56% of the people here voted to leave, knowing full well that you know, they and the AMs want you to have this second vote. It's an absolute disgrace. Wales voted to leave the EU. A lot of people forget that. A lot of people think that it was just over the border, our big neighbor in England, but it wasn't. The Welsh voice needed to be heard. We were loud and we were proud and we said that we knew that we were better off out. The Labour Party of today does not represent the Labour Party of Keir Hardy. It has changed beyond all recognition. Over the last 119 years, the ideals and the reasons for the Labour Party to exist, they've been watered down and eroded to the point that now the Labour Party only exists to serve the Labour Party. If you disagree with them on any issue, you will be ostracized and banished from their ranks. Last night, I was campaigning in the Gernos estate here. I was amazed at the number of people that were coming out to their doors and saying to me that they were never going to vote for Labour again. Here in Merthyr Tidville, it's incredible. Something is in the air, isn't it? Something is changing and goodness me, doesn't something need to change? All over Wales, we are hearing similar messages from Labour and Conservative members and activists. The Brexit Party is the new movement. It's here because we have come to the realization that actually the two-party state is broken. It serves no one but the two parties themselves. And the biggest example of this, of course, was the referendum. You were told, you tell us, you have your say, once in a generation opportunity to tell the Prime Minister, to tell the members of Parliament in Westminster, and what did they say? They will do exactly what you tell them. Unless, of course, you tell them what they didn't want to hear. The people of Wales voted 52.5% to leave the EU compared to 47.5% to remain. Of the local authorities, there's 22 here in Wales, 17 voted to leave, including this one. Merthyr Tidville voted 56.5% to leave. Caerphilly, 
they did a little bit better actually, 57.6% to leave. And good old bladder Gwen, 62% to leave. And yet you've got Labour MPs and AMs who disagree with you and want you to vote again till you agree with them. You knew what you were voting for. You knew what Brexit meant because I know you're not stupid. And it's an absolute outrage that our politicians think that they know better than you. You didn't vote for a deal to be aligned closely to the EU, to stay in the customs union or the single market. None of that was on the ballot paper. It just simply said, remain a member of the EU or leave the EU. We knew what we were voting for. <laughs> Which is 23 miles, I think, in that direction. 23 miles away, but actually it may as well be 23,000 miles away for the good it does here in Merthyr. I know that too many of you feel that that re referendum was, was honored, that devolution was honored, because it was actually jobs for them, wasn't it? It was benefiting the politicians, not the people. With a very, very minuscule turnout of just 50.2%, the yes to devolution campaign won with 50.3% of the vote. That's just 6,721 majority. Of the 22 local authorities in Wales, 11 voted yes and 11 voted no. But there was no ambiguity, no call to delay for three years while we argued what the vote actually meant. The people of Wales had spoken and that was what was enacted. Because ladies and gentlemen, that's how a democracy works. This is what you do when you have a referendum. We're not Ireland and we're not Greece. This is Wales. We voted for it, we expect it, and we want it. Two hundred and ninety five thousand one hundred and fifty three more people voted for Brexit than voted for Welsh devolution. More people than live in Swansea or Wrexham or Newport. The Brexit Party is here to give the people of Wales once again a voice that will be heard in Westminster. We are saying that the will of the people must overrule the will not of Parliament. Give us your vote on the 23rd of May. Tell your neighbours, tell your family and your friends. We can do something with this anger, with this frustration and with this shaken faith in democracy. We can send an earthquake to the heart of Westminster that we must be listened to. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Isn't it great, ladies and gentlemen, Nathan Gill? He referred to the broken two-party system. When we say we want to change politics for good, that involves taking on the vested interests of the establishment. Drain the swamp. Wonderful. We're going to take on the establishment. We're going to take on the lobby groups for the multinationals like the CBI. We're going to take on and reform the civil service so that they're popular around here, aren't they? <laughs> we'll try that again. We're definitely going to take on the civil service. <laughs> Remember that. Um, standing to be elected requires courage. It requires bravery. And our next speaker never imagined that she would be putting herself up for election, but it's fantastic to have her on board. You shouldn't mess with her either, either, because she used to be a soldier in the TA and she tells me she's very fast at being able to strip a submachine gun. <laughs> More seriously, we can always have a bit of fun in politics. More seriously, she's worked both in the private sector, in legal services, and also in the public sector. She knows 
how things can be improved. It's fantastic to have Julie, Julie Price, as our candidate on the Welsh, uh, on the Welsh list. Julie. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yeah. The only time I've ever spoken on a microphone like this was on the checkout in B&Q. <laughs> but you know what, ladies and gentlemen? I should not be standing here, and you should not be standing there. It's an outrage. And why we're here, nobody is listening to us. In 2016, we were asked that question, encouraged to speak our minds via the ballot box. When it came to the question asked, initially I was open-minded. If Cameron had come back with something, anything, I may have voted to remain, but he didn't. I read the leaflet, you know that leaflet, and then decided to campaign for vote leave. After all, this was a once in a generation opportunity and I really wanted to do my bit. I voted to leave, like all of you, like the majority did. I did what was asked of me. And you know what happened? The whole political class, the media, comedians, thespians, even the sports pundits lost their collective minds. <laughs> I'm actually a very private person and I find it very hard to wear my political heart on my sleeve, especially in the face of the rancour, disrespect, hatred and ridicule that has been thrown at all of us as leavers. Yeah. People don't know much about me. I'm very ordinary, and my professional life has largely been about supporting those who are in the limelight, like lawyers, like Welsh Government ministers. I used to be a civil servant. I'm not anymore. Um, <laughs> but hey, my head's well and truly above the parapet, so here goes a little bit about me and my, my journey. I was born in Cardiff, in the Roth area. My great-grandfather was William Atkinson, and he was a merchant seaman. He landed in Cardiff and fell in love with a lady who was selling the tea at Cardiff Central Station. She was called Hilda. This was 1917. After he finished his service, he uh, became a sewerman and he did that for the rest of his career. They had 14 children between them <laughs> and she was a cleaner. And one of those 14 was my nana. All of the kids grew up and survived to adulthood, which is quite a feat at the time, and they entered the services worked in ship shops, cigar factories and shops, and some of them laboured on building sites. They all worked hard, they stayed just about on the right side of the law, they paid their taxes and they cast their votes when they damn well felt like it. And I come from this stock, I work hard, I make a living and I've made my own luck, as have we all here stood here today. We're a traditional working class family, the sort who would support the Labour Party and expect the Labour Party to support us. Those that family, my grandparents, my great-grandparents, and my parents are my absolute heroes. And hello to mum and dad in Crete watching on live feed. They've, po they've posted their postal votes, it's okay. Um, the work ethic instilled in me helped me to be the very first in my family to go to university. I found it really hard to do that, but I did it. I got the degree, and I'm lucky to have worked ever since in the public sector. I live in, in Newport now with my lo lovely, lovely husband. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> as far as politics goes, I've always been a floating voter. I've voted for every mainstream party, depending on the issues, what's happening in the country, what's happening in the world, and how I feel on the day. In 97, I voted for Labour, and I got what I wanted. In, ni <laughs> in 97, I also voted against the establishment of the Welsh Assembly. I didn't get what I voted for. Do you know what? I just moved on. And then in 2016, I expected the majority vote to be implemented, because that's what usually happens. I pay my taxes, we all make our contribution, and in return, we get our vote. And in 2016, we told the government that we wanted to leave the EU. They haven't listened, and they are still not listening. So, next week, we have to exercise our vocal cords yet again. So, who do we vote for as leavers? 
<laughs> I'm going to take you through the options here. Um, Labour. <laughs> All of the Welsh candidates want another referendum. They are perfectly open about that. Clyde Cymru. <laughs> Well, they, they've set out their stall, they want to stay in the EU, but they actually want to come out of the UK, presumably via referendum. The Conservatives, they just need to sort themselves out. And the Lib Dems are actually... <laughs> the Lib Dems are saying bollocks to Brexit, proving that they are not liberal or democratic. And the rest, no credibility, so I'm not going to mention them. Six weeks ago, and I'm sure all of you felt exactly the same way, I was saying I am never going to vote again. And now I'm saying I'm not having this. We made our decision. So, Literally in the last month, I've turned full circle from never wanting to vote again, now I've got a party to vote for. And to all those politicians and journalists clutching their pearls at the polls, the rising number of supporters, Nigel having the audacity to be on the telly, I say this, he gave you notice, he told you this would happen and you've all lost your minds again. Yeah. Since the referendum, I've been saying for three years now that politics is broken in this country, and I really do genuinely feel that it is. When the whole nation cannot believe a word that comes out of our Prime Minister's mouth, politics is broken. When a tagged and convicted criminal is allowed back into the Commons, politics is broken. And when the Speaker is nothing like impartial, politics is broken. <laughs> we need massive change in this country, and I believe that this Brexit party is that change. Well done. Brilliant. Isn't she great? Big hand, Julie Price. Grab a, grab a few there. So brave, so passionate, and so anxious about what's going on in politics today. Now, I was a little bit rude about the civil service earlier, but the good news is, ladies and gentlemen, there are exceptions. And our next speaker is without question one of those exceptions. Because, like all of us, he looked at what happened and he said, this is an outrage. It's shocking. It's a disgrace. And he spoke to his wife and he said, you know what? I'm going to give up my very nice job at the civil service with his nice pension because he knew that the moment that he announced that he would be a candidate, he would have to resign immediately, that day, leave the office. So he really did put his whole financial security on the line for democracy. And it is truly humbling to have him standing for the Brexit party in these European elections. And let's just remember, we talk about a waste of taxpayers' cash. I mean, Julie referred to it. This election is costing £150 million. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the price of a large new hospital. It's unbelievable how these clowns are wasting our money. But it really is... <clears throat> I want you to give a massive, massive welcome to James Wells because he has really put his neck on the line for democracy. James, welcome. <clears throat> Please welcome to the stage, James Wells. Good evening, Martha. 
Wow, what a fantastic campaign we're having in Wales at the moment. Do you know how we know how it's going so well? Because the establishment is out to get us. Yeah. yeah. All the attacks on Nigel we're seeing on the BBC and the establishment, they're worried. Do you know what they're worried about, though? They're worried that you have had enough of them. So we've been out campaigning all across Wales over the past two weeks, and the reception we've had is truly amazing. So personally, I've been to Cardiff, Newport, Pontypool, Maesteg, Bridgend, Hoth Call, and of course the best place in South Wales, Merthyr Tydfil. And when we've been out campaigning, two themes have emerged speaking to people. One is about democracy, and the other is about changing voting patterns in Wales. So firstly on democracy. The one thing that unites many Remainers, but all Leavers, is the sense that democracy is being trampled on by our MPs in Westminster. They've ignored the largest democratic vote in our history. So what do our MPs say about that? Well, what they say is, we didn't know what we were voting for. They say it's not possible or it's too difficult to deliver Brexit. They say we were lied to or that we've changed our minds. Have you changed your mind? No. So after speaking to people on the streets across Wales, do you know what? We did know what we were voting for. That yes, we were lied to, but we were lied to by successive UK governments about what the EU is and where it's heading. And it's also clear that very few people have changed their minds. In fact, I've come across dozens of Remainers that are now going to vote Leave because they believe in democracy. And you know what? Delivering Brexit is actually quite simple. We ask the EU if it wants to do a deal, and if it doesn't, we walk away on WTO. And so people are angry. And I've spoke, spoken to lots of people, like Joyce from Cardiff, who said that she could not believe that this is the country that people around the world respect when we talk about democracy. She said, we expect the UK to set an example to other countries. But if they're doing things like this, then what does that mean for our democracy? And she's right. And that's why you lot are tamping at our MPs in Westminster. And it's even worse than that, as Richard highlighted, £150 million for these elections, three years after we voted to leave the EU. That could buy a new hospital, or it could train up 2,000 new nurses. And it's a disgrace. And that's why people are angry. And people are angry with our MPs, MPs such as Dominic Grieve, <laughs> Oliver Letwin, and my favourite, Anna Subri. Oh. And what about Yvette Cooper? Oh. Her constituency voted 66.4% to leave, and yet she has the gall to put forward a bill to take no deal off the table to try and stop Brexit. And what about Gerald Jones? Oh. Labour MP for Merthyr Tidville and Rimley. You lot voted 56.5% to leave the EU, and yet Gerald voted to take no deal off the table. And he was voted in by you to represent you. So, democracy matters, and it's a disgrace that our MPs think so little of it. So the second theme that emerged while speaking to people across Wales is the change in voting patterns. Nina from Pontypool put it well. 
She said my grandparents would turn in their grave if they knew that I was voting for any party other than Labour. But Jeremy Corbyn has let Wales down. She said Corbyn has sat on the fence trying to pretend to Leave voters that he will respect the referendum, while also suggesting to Remain voters that the party will hold a second referendum. And that is why people across Wales, everywhere we go, are losing faith in Labour. Another example of the disingenuousness of Labour is its six tests that it published to decide whether it would support a vote, a Brexit deal. One of those tests said, any deal must deliver the exact same benefits that we currently have as members of the single market and customs union. Well, a deal that delivers that is membership of the European Union. <laughs> it's not leaving the EU. So what this tells us about Labour is that it's more interested in playing political games than it is delivering the result of the referendum. Sorry, I need some water. And I also hear this week that Keir Starmer and Tom Watson have come out saying that Labour should back a second referendum. And then you've got the likes of Lord Adonis, who says that Labour voters who want Brexit should not vote Labour. Well, why agree with him? So, Labour has let Wales down, and what people are saying is they're tamping about it. And you know what? I'm angry too. I'm so angry that three weeks ago I resigned from a secure job in the civil service, a job that I loved, so that I can stand as your MEP candidate for the Brexit party in Wales. Yeah. And what I want to say to those MPs is that I resigned because I've had enough of the nonsense going on in Westminster. I resigned because I want to stand for a party that stands up for democracy. And I resigned because I want to change our politics for good and help end the two-party political system that is currently broken. And to borrow a great phrase from the amazing Anne Widdicombe, I want to tell the MPs in Westminster that there are a bunch of nincompoops. So listen, we have a fantastic list of candidates from all walks of life, successful people who have actually done something with their lives. We believe in democracy, and we want to say to the MPs that we meant it the first time when we voted, and we still mean it. So if you're fed up, like me, and you want to send a message to the MPs in Westminster that they need to respect the referendum result, make sure that you vote for us on the 23rd of May. Thank you. Brilliant. Well done. Great. James Wells, ladies and gentlemen, former head of trade at the Office for National Statistics and now an outstanding candidate for the Brexit Party. And James referred to the advantages of a WTO Brexit, one of which is that we don't need to waste £39 billion by writing a cheque and sending it to Brussels. No, we can spend it back here in the United Kingdom, in the regions, investing where it should be spent. And we had some exciting news today because we now, the Brexit Party, we actually have our first four elected members of an assembly because four members moved over to the Brexit party in the Welsh Assembly, which means that when we save that 39 billion pounds, they can help ensure that it's properly, wisely spent here in Wales. And it's fantastic. Our next speaker, <clears throat> our next speaker will promise to deliver that for you. Please give a huge round of applause, 
Mark Reckless. <laughs> Two years ago, I made a terrible mistake. I trusted Theresa May. When she triggered Article 50 and said we would leave the European Union on the 29th of March this year with or without a deal, I believed her. When she said we would leave the European Union's customs union, the European Union's single market, and the European Union's Court of Justice, I voted for her. I made a terrible mistake. She has not delivered any of those things. Now, I thought I was in good company. I thought quite a lot of people who'd voted for Brexit believed what the Conservatives said, thought that if you voted leave in a referendum, that's what would be delivered. I remember in the referendum, canvassing some people and them saying to me that, well, you say vote leave, but what difference will it make? The politicians will never do it. And I thought that was the wide, wider fringes of a conspiracy. I thought the idea that if you had a referendum and there was a clear vote to leave, the idea that the politicians just wouldn't do it, that they would ignore it, I thought that was for the birds. I was wrong. So the Conservative Party is not delivering what it promised. They tried to drive a disastrous deal through Parliament, a deal that would hand over 39 billion quid. 39 billion quid Richard Tice would much rather we spent here in the UK, including in Wales. I'm not sure politicians always spend your money well, but I'm sure it would be spent a lot better if the decisions were made closer to home rather than in the European Union. When that disastrous deal that would lock us into the European Union's customs union, unless they gave us permission to leave, when that was voted down in Parliament, Theresa May and her cabinet, no more than two months ago, faced uh, an ex existential choice. They had to choose between leaving the European Union with no deal or remaining. They chose to remain. They betrayed every one of those 17.4 million people who voted in a referendum to leave, and now they are going to see the consequences of their actions. Yeah. But that's uh, enough of the Conservatives. Here in Wales, we are ruled by the Labour Party. There is a Labour government. There is a Labour-dominated assembly. Of the 60 assembly members, 10 of us voted to leave. The other 50 all voted to remain. But you decided differently. And to start with, those other 50 AMs, they told us they would respect the result. But gradually, as they've begun to think they could get away with it, thinking there's no alternative to their parties to labor in the Valley's constituencies, they thought they could do what they want. Alan Davis represents Blyna Gwent. 62% of his voters voted to leave. But he tells them they got it wrong. He, he says they need to vote again. He says he knows best. Lynn Neagle in Torvine, 60% of her voters said to leave. But she wants to stay. And she thinks she should get to decide that she knows best. And here in Merthyr with Dawn Bowden, we 56, 57 percent voted leave, but she wants to back her party looking at forcing you to vote again. And they have a Brexit minister. They have a statement almost every week about Brexit. It's not their responsibility to deliver it, not just, to, just not to block it, but they've got a Brexit minister who's always updating us about what they're, what they're doing. And he says he has to strike a balance, a balance between how you voted what you decided to do in that referendum. And his 
superior understanding of what he says are your best interests. He says he knows best and ye may be made to vote again. We're having a chance to vote again next Thursday. Yeah. European elections, we should never have been voting in, but they're making us. And I see a lot of people out there who are waving banners. And I say to you, take away those banners tonight, take them home, display them in their windows, give them to your neighbours, don't just vote yourself next Thursday, but ask everyone you know, everyone you see, to come out and vote for the Brexit party. You have heard what some of these candidates have given up to fight to represent you. I see every day those politicians who think they know best, who want to tell you what to do. But ultimately, in a democracy, it's not them who's in charge, it is you. Everyone needs a boss, and for elected politicians, it is their constituents who are their boss. This Brexit party is going to change politics for good, and I ask you, all of you, to go out next Thursday and show them who is boss. Well, Mark. Mark Reckless, ladies and gentlemen. And and so to our final speaker. Some of you may have heard of him. He's been around for, for over 25 years battling for this cause. He's without question the most influential person on British politics since the Second World War. The, and we've touched on courage, but the abuse, the vitriol, the threats to his own safety and that of his family have been utterly appalling. But the good news, ladies and gentlemen, is that he's been in training and he is back. <clears throat> Before we welcome Nigel to the stage, let's just remind ourselves of a few of his thoughts on the video. We have a parliament that is now completely out of touch with our country. I think politics is broken. Our task and our mission is to change politics for good. The Brexit Party has been formed because, very simply, the government and parliament do not wish to deliver Brexit. We are fighting back. The whole of our politics needs changing. The two-party system doesn't work anymore. If they thought we were going to give up, they've got another think coming. This country needs the Brexit Party, and the Brexit Party needs you. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage, Nigel Farage. Welcome to the Brexit Party rally. The sun is shining. I hope and believe that is an omen. And thank you for making the effort to get here because I understand that it's not been that easy to get into the venue. That the approach to Trago Mills was blocked by protesters lying in the road. Who were they? Well, they came from Plyde. They came from the Welsh Nationalists. And what they were doing is they were trying to stop a public, democratic, open debate free to everybody in Wales to come along to because they don't want to have a proper, open, democratic debate. And you know why? Because they know 
that next Thursday they are going to get smashed by the Brexit party in those polls. Oh yes, no question. But if you think about it, would any of us in the Brexit party, would we try and stop other political parties, people with different points of view, would we try and stop them from having open debate? We would never even consider behaving like that, would we? Because we believe in democracy. We believe it's the most important freedom that we have living in this country. So shame on them is what I say. But in many ways, it isn't really their fault. Because you see, ever since that beautiful morning on the 24th of June, 2016, when despite the fact that nearly all of our politicians lined up to tell us we shouldn't vote for Brexit, despite the fact the big businesses lined up to tell us we'd lose our jobs, it would all be a disaster, despite the fact our Chancellor at the time, George Osborne, told us, I know I feel the same way about him as well, I gotta tell you. George Osborne telling us half a million jobs would go immediately. Foreign and direct investment would stop. It was gonna be a disaster. They even flew President Obama into this country to tell us that we'd go to the back of the queue. And despite all of it, by a big majority of 1.3 million votes, we said we want to govern our own country and be an independent nation. We voted Brexit. But the trouble is, you see, and the reason those protesters are outside tonight, and the reason the level of vitriol is poured upon those who believe in nothing more than us being an independent, self-governing, democratic nation, is from the very beginning, many in our political establishment, despite mouthing the words that they would respect the result of the referendum, have in fact done the complete opposite. They appear on television on a regular basis. John Major appears on television and tells us we should simply revoke Article 50 cancel the whole process and never far behind John Major is Tony Blair. Again. Again, telling us we didn't know what we voted for, we don't know what's good for us, we're going to have to have a second referendum because next time we'll get it right. And it's the same, isn't it, with Nick Clegg and so many of the others. And of course, my favourite of all, all of our favourites, Anna Subri. But there is, no, there is a serious point somewhere here, I'm sure I can find it. The serious point is this. Democracy can only work if those that lose elections are prepared to accept the result. If that doesn't happen in a general election, if it doesn't happen in a referendum, then you finish up with a system that falls into disrepute. And I would argue the reason that we've got division in this country the reason we've got the levels of abuse that we're seeing in this country, the reason that we've got political activists blocking the road here at Trago in Merthyr Tidville is many in our establishment, far from respecting the vote, have done everything they can in the last two years to overturn the greatest democratic exercise in the history of our nation, and it is a total and utter disgrace. Yeah. 
Yep, we voted for it in a referendum. We then, in a general election, voted for two parties who promised us they'd deliver Brexit. We then saw 500 members of Parliament vote for Article 50. And like Mark, I have to confess, I thought on that day we'd won. Because it became law. The law of the land was that we were going to leave on the 29th of March at 11 p.m. in the evening. But did we leave on March the 29th? Did we hell? Then we were told by Mrs. May, who incidentally is the worst Prime Minister in the entire history of this nation, and I think the most dishonest one as well. Then she said, don't worry your little heads, it's fine, we're leaving on the 12th of April. And did we leave? And then she told us, don't worry, it'll all be fine, we'll leave by the 30th of June, and that disappeared, and now we're told it'll be okay, because we're going to leave on the 31st of October, Halloween. Trick or treaty, ask yourself. And I've come to realize, over the course of the last six months or so, I've come to realize that with our existing political system, we are never going to get the Brexit that we voted for because these two parties filled with career politicians influenced by big money and the multinationals simply won't ever deliver it to us. And so I had to think about this because I've campaigned for 25 years for us to be free of this undemocratic, increasingly unpleasant European Union. And goodness me, whatever criticisms I may have had of the EU, and of course, some of you may know I've been an MEP for 20 years and I, I get up and give a lot of speeches in that parliament. I always try to be as constructive and helpful as I possibly can be. But whatever I might have said about these people, over the course of the last two years, they've shown themselves to be more arrogant and more dangerous than I'd ever even believed possible. The sooner we leave these people and run our own affairs, the better it'll be for our country. So in the end, Mrs. May came back waving a piece of paper and saying Brexit in our time. But the truth of it is, it's not Mrs. May's deal. It's Monsieur Barnier's treaty, which he wrote with Mrs. Merkel looking over his shoulder. It is such an appalling document that I can only countenance it being done by a nation that had been defeated in war. And it has humiliated us on the world stage, it has made our country a complete and utter laughing stock. So it's no wonder, it's no wonder that three times it's been rejected by Parliament and now we're told she's going to bring it back for a fourth time. I suppose you have to admire her persistence if nothing else. But now what she's trying to do, she's trying to do a deal with Corbyn's Labour Party that would make an already appalling treaty from which we have perhaps no ever means of escape. And she now wants, with Labour to do a deal that could mean permanent membership of the Customs Union and effectively membership of the single market. And that is what the Labour and Conservative parties are now currently contemplating. They are trying to build a coalition of politicians against the people of this country and we will not stand for it. We won't stand for it. And Labour have been rumbled. Jeremy Corbyn playing this game of constructive ambiguity, sitting on the fence, pretending 
pretending to you here in Wales that really he's on your side when it comes to Brexit. The truth of it is, and you've heard much about your local MPs here in the valleys, but next Thursday when you vote, all four of those Labour candidates are all Remainers and all support a second referendum. So please, please, when you go from here, if you've got friends of yours that voted Leave and normally vote Labour, tell them they cannot possibly vote Labour if they believe in Brexit. Get that message out. And of course, I've also learnt that just winning a referendum, just winning one election, isn't enough. We've got to go on from here. This is about more than Brexit now. This is about democracy. It's about trust that needs to exist in our leaders. It's actually, this is all about the very bedrock of our civilization. And in order to achieve it, we are going to have to sweep away a two-party system that now serves nothing but itself. We can do so much better than this. I believe that, and I hope you do too. So we are. We in the Brexit Party are positive. We are optimistic. We are patriotic. We believe in our nation. We believe in the people. We believe this country currently are lions led by donkeys and we intend to do something about it. And to give you a flavour, give you a flavour of that positive tone, last night on BBC and ITV we put out, and in Welsh too, we put out our party election broadcast. Some may have seen it, some may not, but have a look at the Brexit Party's party election broadcast. I'm oh. blonde. Put some of my nose off. People gave their lives for the right to vote. To be able to change the things they didn't like. We thought our votes meant something. But we've been let down. We've been betrayed. Our country has been humiliated by politicians. Those who we trusted with our vote. We deserve so much better than this. Politics is broken and our democracy is under threat. Enough is enough. It's time to change politics for good. That's why I'm standing. That's why I am standing. I am standing. I am standing. That's why I'm leading the Brexit Party in the European elections on May the 23rd. It's why I'm standing for the Brexit Party. So my community isn't decimated by politicians who don't listen. And that's why I'm standing for the Brexit Party. Because we deserve better. We deserve politicians we can trust and who deliver on their promises. There is a huge disconnect between the MPs and the people. We have all seen what can happen when people lose faith in democracy. MPs can no longer be trusted to represent the will of the people. They say we didn't know what we voted for. That we're stupid. That we're racist. But we're none of those things. We are ordinary people. Business people. We are brothers. Sisters. Fighters. We are doctors. Entrepreneurs. We are the 17.4 million people who voted to leave. And we deserve to be heard. We believe that without democracy, we have nothing. We all deserve to be heard, and in June 2016, 17.4 million of us voted to leave the European Union. And here we are, three years on, and nothing has been delivered. Our vote has been betrayed. This is about more than Brexit. It's about democracy, our country, how the rest of the world sees us. Our politics is broken, and it's time we did something about it. The Brexit Party is about change. You can do something with your vote. Vote for the Brexit Party and change politics for good. Vote for the Brexit Party on May the 23rd and let's change politics for good. So that's the theme of this campaign. We don't just want to beat the other parties 
on May the 23rd. We want to go on from there, and we will, to the Peter Baba election. We'll go on from there and prepare for a general election. This country needs better people in politics. This country needs... This country needs major political reform. We need a parliament that represents the people, not one that fights against the people. We're in this, we're serious about this, we're not going away. We believe with your support, we can change politics for good. So let me ask you, are you with us? Thank you. I did tell you he was back. Better than ever. Warmed up for the greatest battle ahead. We've just got time for a few questions, just to give Nigel a break. I've got a question actually for Nathan from Annette. Today it was announced that the poorest children in the whole country live here in this valley down the road after 40 years in the European Union. How can that change? Thank you, Annette. I mean, basically, we have been the recipients of two tranches of EU money. And we were told that that was going to lift us out of being one of the poorest regions of the EU. Did it do that? No. No, because they're asking for more money. And the time has come for us to stand on our own two feet to make our country great again and to actually invest in ourselves in things that we need to invest in instead of spending that money on £30,000 worth of street furniture in Ponty Pool that practically nobody sits on. <laughs> it's a complete and utter waste. We are a party that believe in investing in our own children's futures. I've got five children. I'm rather, you know, um, I'm, I'm a little... <laughs> Enough. <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking at this in a bit of a selfish way. I want my children to have a great future, which is why I got involved in politics in the first place. And that's why we want each of you to get involved in politics so that we can have a Wales that we all believe in. Now... Now, Steve's got a very important question. Nigel, did you enjoy your pint in the Abergley? What, it, what a lovely pub it is. And a beautiful part of the world this is too, isn't it? Now, I've said to everybody, I've said to all the press, that I'm off the beer. No, I'm not a liar. But I did sneak in a gin and tonic before lunch. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, Sarah asks, what happens what happens if May gets her bad deal through in some dodgy deal with Jeremy Corbyn? Then what? Well, I mean, the Prime Minister says she will bring back the treaty either with these Labour amendments or without these Labour amendments, and she'll bring them back to the House of Commons in the week beginning June the 3rd. Why would she do that? Well, because she hopes that her own backbenchers and many in the Labour Party will be so terrified by what the Brexit vote has done to them in the European elections that she thinks out of fear they will all come into line because that would mean we wouldn't actually have to take our seats in Brussels and Strasbourg. Let me just tell you something. The appetite now for us to simply be free of this European club and to get on with the rest of our lives has never been stronger at any point in the last three years. <clears throat> and if they, if they think they can get rid of the Brexit party by passing a terrible treaty that costs us 40 billion, that doesn't mean Brexit at all, if they really think they can do that and get away with it, my answer is they will be stunned at what we'll do in the next general election. We'll try and sweep them away. And, and does the same apply, Nigel? Final question, Graham from Barry. Does the same apply if they withdraw Article 50? 
Well, I mean, look, you, you know, the, Article 50, despite what John Major thinks, perhaps he's gone a bit funny with age, I don't know. Um, uh, the, the idea, I mean, if, if Article 50 was revoked, you know, if this became the Labour Party's policy to simply cancel the greatest democratic exercise uh, that had ever been seen in our nation, then in those circumstances, the Brexit party wouldn't do well in the next general election. It would win the next general election. And I think it would. You heard it. You heard it loud and clear, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we've got time for. But let's just have our hands in the air, all of the candidates as well. Placards in the air, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody up. We've got one more. Perfect. What do we want? Brexit. Brexit. When do we want it? Now. now. What do we want? Brexit. Brexit. When do we want it? Now. now. One more time. What do we want? Brexit. <laughs> when do we want it? Now. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Have a very safe trip home. Thank you. Vote for the Brexit party on May the 23rd and let's change politics for good.